Do they want to buy and can they buy? Those are the two things that you want to understand with a buyer. That's it. That's all you need to know. Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. Well, hello. Hi, Autumn. How are you? Hey, Dan. I'm great. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you for asking. You want me to go ahead and start? Yes, go ahead, please. Sumshri, are you with Agent Power Huddle or are you joining us? All right. Let me get started. So today, what I want to talk to you guys about are the three frameworks of sales. And before I start, Autumn, how long do I have until for 30 minutes? minutes? Yeah, 30 minutes. 30 minutes it is. All right. So that's fantastic. Okay. So let's talk about the three frameworks of sales. So first of all, what I want you to consider is the fact that you could implement a framework in your business. And that's something that many people that I've recognized in sales uh, don't consider. And so when you could take and you can look at, um, here's the start, I have nobody, like no buyers, no sellers, no no nothing. I know that's not correct English, but I got nothing, okay? And here is a $10,000 payday. That's your commission check. And and maybe you've got, you know, you got people. I hope that you do have people, right? But for every new person that you get, there's still a journey of, I got nothing. I create an opportunity. I meet somebody. They're referred to me from, uh, you know, from my networking group or they're referred to me from uh, another agent or I do an open house or whatever I do. I do some activity to be able to create an opportunity. And then I create the opportunity and I have a conversation and then I'm able to get hired and then I'm able to exceed their expectations and then I'm able to go to closing and now I've got a paycheck, right? That's pretty cool. So if you can start thinking about sales from a linear fashion then you'll make more sales. And I already know that you want to make more sales. You do want to make more sales, right? Yes, yes. Okay, I took my glasses off because my light is shining and it's blinding me. And now I'm going to have my forehead blind me. (laughs) But that's okay. All right, so let's take a look at three of these frameworks. So these are the CPI business frameworks that I teach in the No Broke Months community that uh, that I'm going to go through with you today. And, uh, and and literally, there is a business framework for every single step of, and we can break it down, like, how do you do an open house? There's a framework to do to be able to do an open house such that you can have predictability. How do you do um, a networking group? Like, how do you work in a networking group and be able to get referrals from, from a networking group? I've been networking since 2007. In a BNI Positive Powers, uh, look it up. BNI Positive Power. That's the group that I founded in 2007. Every Wednesday morning, I go to that group. It makes me around hundred thousand dollars a year from one lead generation source. Okay, so I want you to consider if I could get a hundred grand a year from one source. That's one. Would it be worth uh, three to five hours of my time a week? And to be candid with you, my time invested into today is closer to three than five, much closer. Okay. And so, but again, these are different ways that you could get business. And there's a framework of how do I get business from uh, from networking? How do I get business from an open house? How do I get business from uh, referrals from agents, et cetera? But once you get the business and hello, I can't see who you are. Hello, Mike. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So once you get the business, hello, everyone on Zoom as well, or not on Zoom, but on Facebook, Workplace, wherever we're at, then what do you do to connect with them? Okay, so first step, what we're going to go through today is we're going to go through three uh, of the frameworks, which starts with connection, and then we're going to do qualify and then persuading. Connect, 
qualify, and then pre-suede. Pre-suede was coined by, as far as I know, Dr. Cialdini, who's, uh, I think he's Berkeley, South Carolina, uh, not South Carolina, uh, South, uh, Berkeley in California. And um, so he's a, um, a psychologist and a sales coach um, teaching, you know, um, ways to be able to communicate. Okay, so we're not going to persuade because that's reactive. Instead, we're going to persuade. And I'll talk to you about how to do that here today. So step number one is connect. So let me give you some, uh, I'm looking for a crayon that, that I can use. Okay, step number one is to connect. So how can you connect? First of all, what is connection? So I've taught this in Age of Power Huddle before, right? But I'll, I'll remind you for those who weren't there and, uh, and I'll do it quickly, right? If um, I'm sure that Autumn can share with us, or maybe if she can, if you can't, then hit me up. I'll get you a video of me teaching this concept in a more uh, in-depth formula. So how do, what is connection? How do you connect with somebody? First of all, understanding what is connection. There's a CPI communication model, which is three steps. So the CPI communication model to connect is step number one is to gain rapport. Step number two is to ask adept questions. And step number three is to actively listen. Now, this is a concept that I taught on Age of Power Huddle before, one, two, three, and this is the framework to connect, okay? So I'm not going to go into this as deep as I've gone before, but I will definitely, you know, uh, unravel this for you. So first of all, rapport. What is rapport? Well, I gave you sort of a, uh, I'll give you sort of a hint. It's over here in the... Uh, in the in the definite, you know, of what we're defining right now, rapport is a connectivity. It's a connection. Okay, so then you have to ask, well, what is a connection of? It's a connection of energy. Mike, you have energy. Dan, he has energy. My brother's name is Mike. And connecting is when we are paying attention to each other's energy, when our energy is intertwining. We are spiritual beings that are manifested in a human condition. OK, like this is my body. When you look at me, you're like you look at this body and you're like, that's Dan. But who re who is really Dan and who is really Mike and who is really you? It is the the spiritual being that rests within this human manifestation. OK, that's who I really am and who you really are as well. And so why would I share that with you? Hello. 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 Welcome to. Uh, hey, got Hey, Kim. We're in the same marketplace. It's cool to connect with you. All right. So, um, so, anyways, so I'm not in Pennsylvania though. I don't know what I, I don't understand the PA part of that, but the rest of it I can understand. Just so you know. <laughs> All right. But either way, so, um, so we're spiritual beings in a human condition, and when we connect with our energies, that spiritual connection, that's what rapport is. Typically, when I ask when I'm teaching a larger class, I say, what's rapport? And the class says uh, something like rapport is feeling good. Rapport is liking somebody. Rapport is connecting with somebody, you know, like in, in, a, in a way that's, um, uh, you know, that, that's pretty much anything but what it really is, which is a connection of energy. How do you know that you're in rapport? You know that you're in rapport is when you can feel it. OK, so the first step to. Connect is to be in rapport. The easiest way to be in rapport is to pay attention to your energy, pay attention to your feelings. Because when you pay attention to yourself, then you can be more adept to paying attention to the other person. And that's how you really truly connect with somebody else. Now, here's some hacks for you of connecting, connecting quickly with rapport. You can mimic what they're saying, the, the last couple of words of what they say. You can pay attention to their body language. And if they're sitting back like this, you could sit back like this. You could um, pay attention to their tonality, their inflection, their voice, their sound, their uh, the volume, whatever it may be, you pay attention to it. And as you pay attention to it, you you adapt to who they are in the way that you are. Now, that may seem a little bit like weird for you, right? I get it. 
You're like, well, I'm being inauthentic. I'm not that person. I gotcha. Well, won't they think I'm making fun of them? No, not at all. Instead, what you do is you connect with them where they're at. Then guess what? Then you lead them where you want them to go. So in a conversation with somebody, I'm going to connect with you right where you're at right now. If you say hello, I say hello. Did you hear how it like went down, went up, was hollow? Hello? Hello? You see how it was deep and, and vibrated a little bit? Right. I will literally pay attention to the person, the way that they're speaking, because when I pay attention to the way that they're speaking, I repeat it back to them. It takes a deep level of awareness, a deep level of understanding, a deep level of paying attention to the other person for me to do that. When somebody is intimately paying attention to you at a deep level, how do you feel? You feel great. Okay. But then through the conversation, I come back to my natural way of being. I still repeat back their words, but I come back to my natural way of being. And what you'll notice is that when you do that, they'll follow you and they'll start then communicating in the way that you're communicating. So subconsciously, what you're doing is you're getting other people. When we get to persuade, this is starting the persuasion piece right here. You're getting other people to follow you and you're doing that from instant one. So. Get in rapport. Ask a depth question. What's an adept question? A depth question is any question that's designed to be able to guide the other person to be able to get what is in their best interest and where you want them to go. That's simply it. The difference between controlling a conversation and dominating a conversation is who's asking the questions versus who's talking. In a sales conversation, you should be talking less than 20%. And of the less than 20% that you're talking, around uh, 50, we'll do it 15%, 5%. So if you have 100%, 80%, you're actively listening, 15%, you're asking questions, and 5%, you're consulting. That would be the framework, right? This is the 5% that you're educating them on. What many salespeople do is they, they do this right here, that 5% of telling them all everything that they need to know. They don't do a whole lot of asking questions, and they do almost none of, of, of actively listening. OK, this is why me straight up with you. Most sales agents suck. Most real estate agents suck. All right. Oh, my God. Let's not use that on a don't put that on a reel, please. Please. Nobody put that on a reel of whoever's producing these things. Right. OK. But it's the reality. It is real. OK. And what I'm teaching you today is, is how to make that go away. So what you're going to do is you're going to ask a depth questions and then you're going to actively listen. So what are you actively listening to and who and, and, and for? You're actively listening to and for the connection of the energy. You're paying attention to the energy, not just the words. Because words are 7% of communication. You may have heard of that before. Yet, you probably focus at least 80% of your efforts paying attention to the words. At least. But it's 7% of the communication. So let's understand how much should you pay attention to the words versus the energy. Me, I intend to do 7% of my paying attention to the words and 93% of my paying attention to the energy. I want to see their bodies. I want to see how they're taking the information that I'm sharing with them if it's making sense. When I ask them a depth question, I'm going to give them time to answer it, but not necessarily out loud. In fact, most questions aren't answered out loud. Does that make sense to you? Now, I just did that to demonstrate because you just said yes, but you didn't say yes externally. Is that correct? <laughs> I can do this all day long. <laughs> okay, so we're going to actively listen, right? But you got to ask a depth question. So what would an adept question be? And a depth question, again, is anything that's gotten them to where they want to go, right? Are you ready to write an offer that gets accepted? Um, what's your intention? Tell me more about what your scenario is, whatever the case, case may be. So we're going to take the adept questions into the qualification process. So there's two really situations that you're qualifying, buyer or seller. Would you agree to that? Pretty much. Okay, could be an investor, which is a buyer or a seller, right? But I, I, I say it, and I say buyers, sellers, or investors, right? So I just that's more of a communication thing that I did. 
So let's just say buyers and sellers. So when you're working with a buyer, when you're qualifying a buyer, what are you identifying? What are you qualifying for? You're qualifying for two things. The two things that you're qualifying for, are number one, their motivation, and number two, their means. Okay? So do they want to buy is number one. And can they, here, I'll just do that. That way I can see you and there's not lights in my eyes. All right, so do they want to buy and can they buy? Those are the two things that you want to understand with a buyer. That's it, that's it. That's all you need to know. Okay, do they want to buy? Can they buy? Here's the reality. The reality is, is that you will, it's a whole lot easier and it's not that hard at all to find people who want to buy. What's hard is finding people who want to buy and can buy. Okay. Right. So certainly you've had that unqualified buyer or that unreasonable buyer or that buyer who was like, we, yesterday, yesterday, I had one of my buyer's agents call me. This is for a buyer that he's been working with for some time and it hasn't worked. And he calls me yesterday. He's Dan, I need some help with this. All right. Tell me about that. He's like, I need some help with, uh, I forget her name, but, um, Iris, I need some help with Iris. And, um, you know, she, she, I've been working with her for six months. She hasn't bought a home yet. She told me she wants to buy a business before the home. She wants to buy a hair salon. All right. I think, John, we should pass. Because her actions have demonstrated that she's not a serious buyer. Her actions have demonstrated that it's going to be six months from now. You're going to invest a lot of time into this. And you're not going to create a result. Okay. Her words may say something different. Her words may say, yes, I'm serious. I had a conversation with her six months ago and her words at that time said, yes, I'm serious. I want to buy. But her actions do not reconcile with the words. Okay. Because we found her the home that she wanted. When in the price that she wanted, that was available. And she didn't take action. And we found that to her for her about three times. Okay. So quali qualifying, if that agent and my agent wanted to do a better job of qualifying up front, motivation and means he'd be in a better position now because he wouldn't be wasting his time working with somebody who's very, very unlikely to ever do anything. For a seller, what are the things that you want to qualify with a seller? What you want to qualify with a seller are the following you want to understand. Two things. What is your expectation of me as your agent? Two. That's number one. Two. How much do you want to sell this property for? Notice I said property, not home. You say home with the buyers, you say property or house with the sellers. Because with home, you want them to appeal to the emotion. With property and house, you want the emotion to, uh, to you don't want them to fall in love with their home again. The one they raised their kids in, you know, like all those memories or whatever the case may be. So property or house. So what's your expectation of me as your agent? How much do you want to sell this property for? Those are the two things you're qualifying for in the seller. Oh, by the way, who noticed what I just did on one of those two things? Did you notice that I've already started closing you? Which brings us to the persuading. How did I already start closing you? What's your expectation of me as your agent? I'm persuading you from get from the get-go. Here's a listing I took yesterday. Here's my notes for them. And check this out. In those right there, where it says, uh, let's see if I can get it. Reasonable people, rational, allergic to lies. Okay, these are some of the things when I asked that question. And he said, to, I said, what's your expectation of me as your agent? He says, well, just don't lie to me. I'm allergic to lies. So not only did I write down, alert, you know, don't lie to me. Of course, that's a that's a given, right? I think it should be a given. But I wrote down his words, allergic to lies. I wrote down his words, reasonable people. I wrote down his words, rational. So if you think of the frameworks, okay, that comes over here in the adapt questions. And then I'm qualifying as step number two. What's your expectation as me as your agent so that and we're not going to get this far today. We're not going to get to the appointment, but I'll, I'll I'll fast forward here for a second so that when I get to the appointment, that's going to be down here in the in the uh, frameworks. 
yesterday I can look at him. I say, you guys are, I love the fact that you guys are reasonable. Okay. What we're going to do today is we're going to come up with a rational price point. That's going to cause your property to sell. Okay. Now whose words did I just use? Those weren't my words, though I said them. Those were his words that I got on the very first conversation that we had. Okay, but you got to pay attention because if you don't pay attention, then you're going to position yourself so that um, so that you miss the opportunity to be able to connect because I'm using his words because when I go on the appointment, I'm reconnecting with him. I'm gaining rapport. I'm gaining rapport instantaneously by using his words. Okay, so this is the way that we do it. So first you could connect. You use the three-step CPI framework to do that. Get in rapport, ask a depth questions, act really listen. Then you're going to qualify. The two things that you're going to qualify for are for a buyer or a seller. For a buyer, you want to look for motivation and means. For a seller, what's your expectation of me as your agent? And what do you want to sell this property for? And now what we're going to do is we're going to persuade. If you want to know how to get hired 85% of the time on a listing appointment or a buyer appointment, even if you've never had a relationship with them before, it happens in before the appointment, not at the appointment, just so you know. So what are some of the things that you can do to be able to persuade? Besides using presumptive languaging, such as what's your expectation of me as your agent? You can follow a framework. The framework that I use when I'm taking listings, and I got a very similar framework for buyers, but I only have time to teach one. So I'm going to use the listings only because I'd rather take listings. All right. And I'd rather you take listings because it's easier. All right. And so the framework to be able to take listings goes like this. So we have the qualification conversation. That's this one right here. Okay. So that's there. And Obviously, before then, we're going to connect with them. We're going to connect with them. And before that, connect, sorry. Before that, we're going to solicit. And what do I mean by solicit? You, you do an open house. You do a uh, an email blast. You go to a networking voice. You, you take action. You do something to be able to create, to be able to have the next step to happen. Does that make sense to you? But guess what? If you do nothing and you're just waiting for your phone to ring, it ain't going to ring. They will not contact you, I promise you. Now, they'll start contacting you if you're doing video marketing. Maybe somebody will contact you. But nothing happens without you first doing the action. So hopefully you got that from this conversation. So first you're going to solicit, then you're going to connect, then you're going to qualify. Now the rest is persuading. So when we go on the appointment, we get hired 85% of the time. So what are those steps? Step number one is to be able to, you get off the phone with them, you take out your camera, your phone, you look into that little pee-pee hole right over here and you say, uh, Kim, hey, it was really nice to connect with you. I look forward to uh, helping you. And um, I just wanted you to put a name in the face. I'll see you on Tuesday at one to get, to get started. Now, what did I just do there? I presume the sale. We're talking about persuading. Dr. Cialdini teaches this. I'm presuming you already hire me from step one, or is that step two, actually? I presume the sale when I say, what's your expectation of me as your agent? I presume the sale when I record the video. I text the video. I type into the text. Hey, I look forward to helping you. See you on Tuesday. I presume the sale again. That's three presumptions right there. I get my Google Calendar invitation. I send them an invitation, and I say, Mike, I look forward to helping you. Okay, again, I presume the sale. By the way, when they accept that invitation, when they accept the invitation to uh, the appointment, I studied my return over a five-year period. I've been doing this for, for many, many years, sending that calendar invitation. And one day I asked my staff, I said, I want you to go back through the last five years and tell me how many people who said yes to that hired us. What we found was that 38% of them that I sent the calendar invitation said yes. 100% of that 38% hired me. They say yes to that, I'm getting hired. Okay? At least historically I have, and I expect moving forward I will as well. Now, of course, the majority won't accept it because they haven't bought into you yet. Okay? But again, watch how we're doing this. So you send the text, 
you uh, you you type in there. That's one, two, three, four closes that we've had right now to persuade them. Then you communicate value to them through a uh, through a series of um, of um, so you got the calendar invite, you got the video text, you send them your pre listing packet, you send them three emails. You send them two texts. You send them a handwritten card. And you do a reminder call. That's the rest of the steps that I'm going to run out of time to teach you. Okay. So these are the steps that you do during the rest of that journey. Take a screen grab of that. I know it's sloppy. Um, I'm I'm doing a five-day listing challenge uh, in two weeks. It's free. It's www.5daylistingchallenge.com. If you're interested, where I have more time to be able to share this with you, I'm going to go live an hour daily online on Zoom, and I'm going to go through these with you, okay? And I'll, I'll help you understand this and not have to you know, read my chicken scratch, okay? But these are the steps that you're taking. So I'll read it to you in case you're trying to take notes. So solicit them, connect with them, qualify with them, send them a calendar invitation, send them a video text. Send them a pre-listing packet. Send them a series of three emails. In those emails, it should be testimonials from your past clients. It should be um, it should be um, examples of the listings that you've done. You, I send them an email. It's got something like, I don't know, 50, hey, you should hire Dan. 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 It just keeps going. No one watches the entire video, right? But if they watch three minutes of that video, all right, yeah, I should hire Dan. Okay. Send them three emails. Um, send them two texts. The two texts that I send them is one is, hey, is there anything that I forgot to ask you during our conversation? The second one is I send them a copy of my webinar. I do a 45-minute webinar, how to improve your value of your home by $30,000 that I sent to them. And then I send them a handwritten card. Everybody always asks me, well, what if I don't have time for that to go through the post office? If it's less, if it's two days or more, I send the handwritten card. If it's 24 hours or 48 hours, I skip that part of the process. And then I give them a reminder phone call on the day of the event, uh, of the listing. Um, hey, just want to uh, let you know, I really look forward to helping you. Seeing you later. Oh, by the way, that's another presumption. So those are the three steps to getting hired. Connect, qualify and persuade and those are the three frameworks of sales that nobody talks about again i invite you to uh, join me on an upcoming listing challenge www.5 that's number five day listing challenge to save your spot it's a free event it's on zoom and um i will show you how to take listings in today's market how i've taken 79 listings in the last 12 months and how i've had no broke months since 2008 with an average of 10 sales but it's not about me it's about you i'm going to help you all right. Thank you so much. Have the best day of your life. Be grateful. Make good choices. Go help somebody and go find a listing. I'll see you guys. Have a great day today. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.